Amen. Well, praise the Lord, saints of God. Thank you, God, for another day of life, health, and strength. Thank you, God, for another Resurrection Sunday. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. I might not be at the sanctuary at New Foundation Christian Center, but I am at home, and this is my church home this morning. And I just want to thank God for all of you that is tuning in today, amen, to hear the word of the Lord God. And we're not going to tarry, we're going to begin our service as we do at New Foundation with a prayer. And I want you to pray this same prayer behind me. Oh Lord, I come before your throne of grace with a contract heart. I ask to be forgiven of our trespasses, I now wholly forgive those who have trespassed against me, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I beam our mercy and forgiveness to all who have harmed, hurt, and shamed me. Those who have offended, persecuted, and criticized me, who have taken advantage of me, and perpetrated an injustice upon me and all those who have cheated me monetarily. I ask you, O oh Lord, to forgive them for doing these things to me. I now release all these people from the judgment and condemnation which I've held in my heart through the words of my mouth. Lord Jesus, I ask you to cleanse me from all bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness, which I have held in my heart for these people who have wronged me in all those ways. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to bring all these people to my remembrance. I will speak their name in faith, believing they are forgiven. I now release all these people and to the reconciling power of the cross of Calvary, which brings total deliverance and healing to our body, soul, and spirit. Amen. If you read that prayer, or if you said that prayer behind me, you are clean. Reading from St. John, the 17th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thy own name those whom thou have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the song of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. If thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for thy sake I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for thee alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through thy word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. I have read to you for your Christian edification, St. John, the 17th chapter, verses 11 through verses 21. God's word is already blessed. And at this time, we're going to turn it over to the hand of our anointed pastor as he brings forth the anointed word of God.
that you might be blessed on today. Praise the Lord. One more time. Praise the Lord. Put those hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. <clears throat> Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We greet you with love today. Thanking God for another day. As I always say, it's a good day to be alive. Amen. So we thank God again that we can come and, and share with you from my home. Uh, this is different, you know. And we want to say to those of you that celebrate uh, Easter, Happy Easter to you. Amen. I'm not a celebrant of Easter, but those of you that do, uh, happy Easter to you. God is still good, still on the throne. Amen. We have some great days to look forward to as long as God is on the throne. So we thank God for Jesus. Thank God for all of you that are listening. Um, all of you that are Facebook Live. All of you that are streaming. Thank God for you. Pray that you will receive something from the Word of God as well so as you will be able to read something from the Word of God today. To encourage and lift your spirit. I'm, I'm not going to be on long today. Just a few minutes to share a few things with you. Um, um, it's a good, good, good. We're going through some some tough crises right now. Tough times. Amen. Being uh, quarantined at home in the home, but God is still good. I'm getting too used to this. Amen. So we <laughs> we it's kind of tough to be in the house. Amen. As much as we are, have been in the house, but yet and still, for your safety, amen, and for the safety of others, please let's follow instruction. Uh, we love you. We're praying for you. Amen. Those of you that need prayer, you can always call. Uh, you have my number. You have First Lady's number. You can always call, and we'll get you, uh, get you, leave your request. If we don't, can't get us, leave your request. And we will be praying with you and for you. All right, we're going to get started. Amen. Looking at the Word of God this morning from uh, Luke chapter 24. And those of you that don't have your Bible, run, get your Bible, run, get your tablets and your um, paper, your pencil. Amen. We're going to um, talk about um, a few things out of Luke chapter 24. Amen. God is still good. This message always deals, and I don't know how many times it's probably been preached today, and then somebody might have not even talked about it at all. But for the benefit of those that don't know uh, anything about the resurrection, I'm going to try to share with you this morning some of the things about the resurrection, um, maybe even get into the purpose of the resurrection. Uh, not, but that would be the main point, is to get into the purpose of the resurrection um, but we thank God for the resurrection, amen, because it is, had not been for the resurrection, our lives would be just down the drain, would be no need, we wouldn't even have salvation. Three things were required for us to have salvation, actually the death, the burial, uh, resurrection, and the ascension. Uh, most of the time the word ascension is left out, but it's very important on the ascension because the ascension part of it was that Jesus sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat, which paid the debt, amen, for our sin. But thank God, all right, we ready to go? Amen. From the book of Luke, St. Luke, chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, amen, beginning at verse 1. It said, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. When they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed about, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? And he is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was 
yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered the, the, uh, his words and returned to the, from the sepulchre and told all the things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other woman that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to be as idle tales, and they believed them not. Verse 12, and it says, Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulchre and stooped down. He beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Now, I'm going to talk this morning from the subject, uh, the evidence of the resurrection. Yes, sir. The evidence of the resurrection. Um, when, evidence is most important in any case. In order to present a truth, uh, there has to be evidence. In order to convince anybody that you're trying to witness to, there must be evidence. Most of the time, as the disciples said, it came in and it looked as a tale, a fable, feeble tale, because something had taken place here that was unusual. Something took place here that they never had seen before. Yeah, well, you said Lazarus. Lazarus was raised from the dead by Jesus, but who raised Jesus from the dead had to be God. So now, Lazarus was not the first fruits of the resurrection for the believers. Lazarus was his Lazarus. So Jesus did it in showing that he was the resurrection and the life. It came to evidence through Lazarus. But now his evidence for the resurrection for believers and the disciples that he followed, the, the, the evidence had to come through a man that died. So when we find here in, in, uh, in the text, we find the tomb was empty. In other words, the discovering the empty tomb was the greatest discovery in human history. However, the great strategy is the most that most people either are not aware that Jesus arose or do not believe that he arose. And that is, that is really one of the big problems right now that most people are not even considering that Jesus rose from the grave. But he did. Uh, whether you believe it or not, he did. It's my faith that I believe that he uh, rose from the dead. So whatever your faith is and however you believe it, that's up to you. But when we look at the text in verse 1, it says, of on the first day of the week. That has been an argument among people for, for days and times that, or what is the first day of the week? How do we know this is the first day of the week? Well, when you look at the text, you actually have to see that the first day of the week was actually Sunday. Now, if people say, well, it was, what about the Sabbath? The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Sunday is the first day of the week. So in our culture, in our time, we celebrate the first day of the week. So now when we look at the scripture, the scripture says that every man has to discover the fact for himself. The empty tomb and the risen Lord had to become a personal discovery in every man's life. Yes. Scripture says, Upon the very first day of the week, early in the morning, yes. they came to the sepulchre, bringing spices which they had prepared, a certain other, and certain others came with them. You know, it's good to have somebody go with you when you're trying to prove something to people. Come on now. In other words, when you're not sure of something by yourself, so it's good to have somebody going with you. The first day, let's go back to the first day of the week. First day of the week. The first uh, day of the week. He said, Jesus Christ's resurrection, uh, the first day of the week, Sunday, was the day upon which Jesus arose. The day after the Jewish Sabbath, Saturday, it says this. Luke clearly spells out when Jesus rose. Up on the first day of the week. Very, very early in the morning. Yes. Jesus arose before dawn. Before the sun arose on Sunday morning. This was significant to the early Christian believers. So sufficient, so significant 
that they broke away from the common day for worship yes. during the week, the Sabbath on Saturday, they began to worship on Sunday, the day of the resurrection of the Lord. Yes. In other words, if you need evidence by scripture, you can go to Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. Also, you can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 2. Because this will tell you that they were, even in the uh, early church, they moved from the Sabbath day to the first day of the week. They said Jesus rose on the first day of the week on Sunday morning. This means that he had been in the grave three days just as he said. In other words, he did not get up one day earlier. Uh, um, he didn't come, not come out of the grave one day early. He stayed there his three days as he had predicted that he would when he said, in three days, I'm going to rise again. Yes, so he had to stay there three days in order to complete what his assignment was and his prophecy that he gave. He would rise again in three days. Now, now let's just continue. In other words, sometimes people say, well, how, why was it he had to be there three days? Let's, let's see. Three days he had to be in the grave. Now, I have been taught, I have learned, and I have read that in order for Jesus to go in the grave, first of all, he had to be compared to uh, a seed. And when he went in the ground, in the grave as a seed, he had to do the same thing that a seed would do before a seed comes up out of the ground. Many of you are familiar with planting anything uh, in order for you to get the harvest of something or you to get the train, the change of something. Yes. Change takes time. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, we all know that. We, we all experience that change takes time. Now let's look at the seed. First, the seed goes into the ground. Mm -hmm. yeah. The seed germinates in the ground. Yeah. Once the seed germinates in the ground, the seed comes back different from the way it went in. Yes. In other words, it comes back with the same thing, with the same seed. It becomes a seed again. But it goes into the ground and germinates and come back different from what, it's, what it was, the way it went in. So the ground had a lot to do with, with Jesus' transformation. In other words, being transformed from the old man to the new man and from humanity unto spirituality. In other words, now he went in the ground as a man, a but he came out as a spiritual man and was not the same. If you can remember, in part one of the texts, it says this. It says that when they, he told the disciples to go across to the other side, he said, and he came walking on the water. Came walking on the water, and beyond that, their recognition, they did not know who he was. In other words, now because he did this at the Mount of Transfiguration, and they did not recognize him because he was walking in a supernatural body because the natural man cannot walk on water. On. So the natural man could not walk on water. So now Jesus comes walking toward them on the, in, on the water. They're in the boat. Jesus walking toward them on the water. And they did not recognize who he was. In other words, they said, what is it? Is this a ghost? No, it's not a ghost. It wasn't a ghost. It was still Jesus. But at the distance, the closer he got, the more they recognized. Now, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He came near to the point where he said Peter saw him and recognized him and said, Lord, bid me to come. Watch this. This, this, is, this is kind of blessed me. When, when he told Peter to come, Peter stepped out of the boat. Peter stepped out of the boat on a word, come. Yeah. Uh, I believe, and, and, and I could be wrong, but, but I believe that, that in, the, in the time that the word reached Peter, the word come reached Peter, I believe that the word transformed a supernatural power into Peter, where Peter was able to walk on the water. Now, it might seem a little bit strange, but we have to look at some things that God does in the supernatural. And when he does things in the supernatural, it is totally different. 
it gives us a different ability. It gives us a different avenue of life. When he does things and we start walking in the supernatural, it's totally different from what we're walking in the natural. Yeah. It's a totally different nature that we're in. So now when we walk into this thing in the supernatural, you understand that Jesus now had Peter to come. So as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, but Peter allowed distractions from the winds and the waves and began to sink. He took his eyes off Jesus. When he took his eyes off Jesus, the supernatural of the word come, left him, wow. and then Peter began to sink. Yes. Now, Peter began to sink because he was no longer looking at Jesus. Mm -hmm. In other words, brothers and sisters, let me help you here, because sometimes we feel like that we're still looking at Jesus when we're looking at everything else. Come on. You, it doesn't take much to take your eyes off Jesus. Because there's so much in the world today that we see and so many things that clutter our minds that it doesn't take much to take your eyes off Jesus. When you take your eyes off of Jesus, failure or sinking is definitely in front of you. Yeah. You are going to do some falling. You are going to have some failures in life. But as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, there is a supernatural connection. Help me with that, Holy God. There is a supernatural connection that stays between you and him Hallelujah. that gives you the ability to do the same thing that he does. Yes. Now, let's look at it. So here we go. He gets up in the morning, early in the morning. Here goes the lady, goes down to the tomb. They go to the grave. And going there, one thing troubled their mind was, who will roll the stone away? Yeah. God has plans. And ever he sends you on an assignment, the women were actually very concerned. The Bible says that they took uh, uh, spices that they were going to embalm his body with. They took the spices there, and in taking the spices, evidently, they knew exactly. Oh, let's go back. Let's go back. What happened was here was that they were women that had followed Jesus all the way to the cross and from the cross and then followed uh, 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 Joseph of Arimathea to the grave where Jesus was buried. They knew exactly where the burial site was. Isn't this strange that they followed him when the disciples deserted him? Wow. But the women followed him, yeah. and they did not have any fear of what was going to be done to them. Come but on. the disciples had a fear, so they went into a hiding, as the scripture says, into a darkness where they could be hid from the Roman soldiers and fear of their life. Yeah. Now, let, let's look. These, on, women, these women going to the grave, and on their way to the grave, these women had just communing, uh, communing, uh, communing among themselves, saying, who's going to roll the stone away? But when God has evidence and wants to prove something, he always gives evidence to prove it. Yeah. Yes, he, what he did was, he said the women going to the grave, they're going to roll the stone away. But when they got there, it says an earthquake took place before they even got there and the stone was rolled away. They were so concerned about Jesus in fear of his words coming true that they sealed the grave. They rolled the stone in front of the grave and seal the grave, and then they put guards on the grave to make sure that the disciples did not come and steal his body. Now, isn't it strange that folk didn't believe, actually said that they didn't want to believe that he was going to rise the third day, but yet in the back of their minds, they did believe that he was going to rise the third day, simply because you wouldn't have went through all of this if you didn't have some type of belief that he was going to rise. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't lock my house if I didn't feel like some, nobody was going to break in it. Come on. Now, now, who, 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 why would they steal Jesus out of the grave when Jesus had already told them that on the third day I'm going to rise? My Lord. In other words, now they didn't understand it, but yet they felt that it was going to happen. Yeah. Now, a lot of things we don't truly understand, but some things with something that used to say that gut feeling that you have actually has puts you into a play that you actually have some type of belief yes. that it's really going to happen. So, so now here we go. The women goes to the tomb. They get to the tomb, and they find that the stone had been rolled away, and two men sitting off from the stone in shining armor. In the strain that God prepares everything that he needs for his evidence. Yeah. And they got there and they looked in the green and, and in, the, in the tomb and the men sitting there said, why are you seeking who you seek? In other words, who are you seeking? We're seeking Jesus. 
Why are you seeking the living among the dead? He is not here. Yes, oh, yes. I can imagine what went through their minds oh, at that time you. when they say he is not here. He has risen. In other words, now he, he ain't here. What, what do you mean yeah. he's not here? Scripture said that he said that he is not here. He has risen as he said he would. Yes. In other words, where is he? Where is he? We know. Come on, let's, let's just play with this for a little bit. We know that he was put here. We came here and we saw him put here. Who, where is he now that he's not here? Man goes on to say, he said, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee? The angel brought a remembrance to them, the words of God, that said to them, how can you not believe what he said? Yeah. He said, in three days I'm going to rise again. How can you not remember the words that he spoke to you? He said, he said saying the son of man, of, of, of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. This is what I got to go through. I got to be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Y'all, I feel like a preacher today in the hands of sinful men, listen, and be killed and be crucified and the third day I'm rising again. Yeah. Now, if I don't walk with somebody three years and be taught by somebody three years, I've got some kind of confidence in what they say. Mm -hmm. In other words, if I've seen somebody work miracles and cast out devils and one of the ladies that was there had seven devils and had been cast out, and yet she stands in awe because not in fear, but in awe because he was not there and they knew they put him there and they had been purchased oils and, and uh, spices in the evening time so that they could get there early in the morning and anoint his body. Now, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it again. Look at it again. It said it, said, it, said it like this. He rose. This means that he had been in the grave for three days, just as he said. Yeah. Yeah. His resurrection from the dead was a triumph, a conquest over death. Death reigns no more. It, its rule has been broken. Yeah. Yeah. The, death of, the rule of death had been broken because once people die, they say that this is the end. Yeah. But this is not the end. Most of the time, it wasn't his end because his assignment was not complete. Can I just say that for one minute? His assignment was not complete because there were still some things he had to do. First of all, when he was in the grave, he had to transform. He had to be uh, uh, roll off. He had to, I would say it like this. I'm going to say it like this and, and maybe you'll understand it better. He had to be like the seed. He had to peel off the outside yeah. so that the inside could come and do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. No seed goes into the ground and keeps the same body. Right. The outward shell peels off. Y'all hear. If the outward shell peels off, then that inward part of the, the of the goody or the grain, it becomes it becomes life. The outward die, the inward live. And this is what happens in the tech in the grave when Jesus was in the grave. The outward shell was peeled off. The humanity was the outward shell. It was peeled off. The, the lifestyle, the manhood, the humanity that he picked up when he came into the world is the part that peeled off. Now that spiritual part of him, that was the inner man or the inner circle of him, the inner man in him, now comes to life yeah. because it's now becoming new and it's going to be a seed that is going to be productive in this world. Yeah. Now he has to come. Now even still, that seed is still being planted. I yeah. wish I had about Thank 10 more minutes. That seed now is still being planted yeah. and is still bringing forth. It is still being productive. People are getting saved every yeah. day. Thank this is Lord. why he needed to go to the grave. This is what's his need. He started on his way to Calvary from the first day he came into the world. He was on his way to Calvary. Yeah. But it took 33 years for him to get there. Yeah. Do I have any help here? And because it took 33 years for him to get there, folks thought he came here to stay. When he came, they looked at him and thought he would come in the wrong. They looked 
for more than what he was. He came as a little baby, but they thought he was coming as a ruler. He wasn't coming as a ruler as they wanted, but he came as a ruler as, as God wanted. Yes. In other words, he came to do something that had never been Hallelujah. done. In other words, he came to preach the good news, the gospel. And that's what we're living on today yes. is the good news of the gospel. And the gospel is the only thing that transforms people's lives. Come on. If people's lives are not transformed by the gospel, yes. that life is not transformed and they do not have a life in Thank Christ. Do I have a witness? Yes. out here anywhere. Yes. Somebody holler back at us through Facebook Live anywhere. Somebody say something. It said the first witness of the resurrection provides strong evidence of the resurrection. Yeah. In other words, here we go. It said they were actually witnesses of Jesus' death and burial. They knew he was dead and they knew where he had been laid. Uh -huh. They had followed along beside the possession of the tomb. Possession of the tomb. They were no there were no questions whatsoever in where the mind about his being dead and buried. There wasn't no question to that. They knew. But when you get to a place, if you know somebody lived here in a house, you got the address, you got the phone number, you got everything. And you drive up to the house, and the house is empty. And nobody told you that they had moved. He just told you before mm -hmm. that I'm going to be moving. Yeah. In other words, uh, uh, I, I'm looking at this, so y'all pray for me out there. Because uh, the, the Holy Spirit kind of taking me a little bit fast. And, uh, if, if you understand that, 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 that where you live at, you know where you live, or you know where your best friend lives, and when you get there, the house is vacant, and they told you, all through 33 years, they told you that I'm going to be leaving. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move. Yeah. In other words, all he was saying was, I'm going to move. I'm going to move from this old house to a new house. Hey, God. In other words, he needed to do that for us. Why did he need to do it for us? He said in, 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 in the book of John, he said, I go to prepare a place for you, yes, Lord. and I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself, yeah. that where I am, you may be also. Oh, so now, now here we go, here we go. This was one of the questions. It said, there was no question whatsoever in their mind about his being dead and buried. They had purchased spices and had come to anoint Jesus' body. Apparently, they had brought uh, the spice is Saturday evening. We just talked about that. And when seven Sunday, this is what uh, after six p.m. When the Sabbath ended, they rose early, very early in the morning, the first day of the week, to go to embalm him. Watch this. They knew he was dead, and they cared. So they wanted to take care of his body, just as loved ones care for the bodies of their deceased. In other words, look at it now. They were religionists who strictly obeyed the law. They were strict in the observance of the Sabbath. Their loved one was dead. Yet they would not break the Sabbath law even to take care of him. Luke 23, 56. The women were obedient to the commandment of God. They were moral and truthful and would never think much less consider lying about the death and the resurrection of Jesus. So what Jesus did, he said, they were, there were great stone rolled away from the entrance. Watch this. He said, stone rolled away, perplexed the women. However, the stone had not been rolled back for the benefit of Jesus. That's the part I like. He didn't need the stone rolled away. Come on. He wasn't, it wasn't rolled away for the benefit of Jesus, but for the witnesses to uh, the resurrection. In other words, evidence, evidence, evidence is so important in this text. Because now it wasn't rolled away. I just said the stone was not rolled away for the benefit of Jesus. It was rolled away for the evidence of the witnesses of the resurrection. When Jesus arose, he was in his resurrected body, the heavenly body of the spiritual di dimension. And the spiritual dimension has no physical bounds, but the witnesses needed to enter the tomb to see the truth. 
In other words, when a spirit is like the wind. In other words, you can have the smallest crack in the wall, in your house, in the window, and air will come in. The wind will come in. Spirits does not need a stone rolled away. This new body that he had taken on uh, did not need a stone rolled away. He could have gotten out of the tomb and gotten out of the grave without anybody saying any stone being rolled away. But God, God has evidence. He wanted to prove to them and show them an empty grave. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yeah, but when one, 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 one part, they said that, that Peter, they went and told Peter, Peter came and looked into the tomb, and he saw everything in the book of John, I believe it is. He said, all everything was laid out as it was when they embalmed it. The wrappings were still in place. In other words, the mat, the napkin that was placed on his face was still in place. In other words, every, they wrapped him like a mummy, but nothing. He just slipped right out of that because that was an outward, outward, outward garment. Didn't need that where he was going. The garment that he was now putting on was a heavenly garment, which was a spiritual garment which covered him and closed him. And he did not need the, anything to, 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 he wanted all evidence of the clothing to be there. In other words, God's plans are so unique that he wants all and everything yeah. to be there to, for his true evidence, the truth that is needed. Y'all, I, I come to tell you now, the truth that is needed sometimes has to become in an unusual way yeah. that people don't understand it. Oh, yeah. They see it and yet don't see it. They see it, but yet don't understand it. Uh -huh. So most of the time, the truth is needed, and God was using an unusual way to present a truth to the people that they did not understand. Yeah. He took the hands of man right out of it. After man's death and kill, uh, 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 crucifying Jesus, that was the end of man's work. After uh, Joseph Arimathea put him in the tomb, that was the end of man's work. Mm -hmm. From that point on, if you read the text, you'll find that now comes the angel, which became and, 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 and began to roll the earthquake, rather, which man cannot cause. God caused the earthquake. This is what happened. Y'all y'all look at it real good. You read the text and read it wide open, you, you'll see it. What happened here is when man finished the work that he was supposed to do, God took control and completed the work that God had sent him to do. Yeah. So now what God does, he, he uses people into a certain manner. And then God goes show up. And in the end of what man can do, then God shows up and takes it on from there. In other words, now he takes his disciples, he descends them there. Peter goes down, looks in the grave, he goes, but he didn't go in. That was one of the other disciples that came with him. He let, allowed him to go in because he was the elder. Yeah. So he allowed him to go in, but they both had witnesses that he had, uh, uh, the tomb was empty. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to say today, yeah. is the tomb was empty, and the tomb was still empty because now he still lives in our heart. Thank you. In other words, he, we don't need we don't need to go to the tomb. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to go to the tomb anymore. All we need to do now is believe. Come on. Because now it has already been stated. Yeah. It has already been proven yeah. through the evidence of Scripture that He has risen from the grave. Yeah. And if we don't believe He's risen from the grave, then our faith is in vain. Oh, our laboring in the gospel Hallelujah. is vain. It has no value to it at all. But this is the part that the people of God must understand that He's still Lord of oh, all. And God. when He got up from the grave, it went up into heaven and sit down at the right and pour his blood on the mercy seat and sit down on the right hand of God and said, Father, glorify thou now yes, me. Yes, thank you, Lord. With your own self, with the glory I had with you before the foundation of the world. And the Father said, sit here on my right yes. hand, on my right hand until we make the enemies our footstool. Yes. He had already took the victory over the last enemy that he had, Hallelujah. which was death. I wish I had just a Come little on. bit more. He said he had taken the victory over the last enemy he had, which was death. Yes. So now he said that the, uh, Jesus Christ's resurrection, that was the body missing from the tomb. The, uh, uh, was yet striking. The, in, they entered in and found nobody in of the Lord Jesus Christ. They beheld, saw, contemplated that Jesus was not there. In other words, they saw the salve upon which they had been laid, and they were not in it, but he was not there. In other words, anytime you see the clothes that somebody had on in the grave, 
My God, and then you look in there, you know they wore them into the grave. And then when you go there and look, and the clothes are still there, not one thread is out of place. Everything is still in order as it was laid. And then you see you have nothing but evidence that he is not here. Mm -hmm. He is risen. You don't have to take anybody's word for it. At this time, these ladies did not have to take anybody's word for it. They had evidence of their own yeah. that Jesus had risen from the grave. You, oh, God, I feel my help here. And he said, Jesus was right. And then he was down and he said in, in Romans chapter 4, verse 21, it said, and being fully persuaded. What he had promised, he was able also to perform. Yes. And then we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. It says, for all the promises of God in him are yea and, in, and amen unto the glory of God by us. And then we go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. It says, if you believe not, yet he abided faithful. Yes. He, can, he, he cannot deny. Oh, God help me today. Yes. Whereby we are given unto us. He's given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises mm -hmm. that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through Christ Jesus. Yes, oh God, God, I feel the Holy Ghost in his place. See, you, see it, it's amazing to me how, how God do such great things in our lives and still sometimes we act like we don't even know who he is. All right. Give me no recognition, no no reverence, no, no, no kind of honor, no kind of praise. We even go to the house. And to the church house, and then we get there, we act like we're in a strange place Come on. because we don't know what's going on. Sometimes you look at the face of the people, and you don't even see what they act like. They don't know what's going on. But I look at Matthew chapter chapter verse uh, twenty eight and, and verse three. It said the angels were radiant, yeah, dazzling figures. The garments shone and that like lightning, very visible, quick, startling, striking, lightning, brilliant, and the white as snow. His garments were glittering white as snow. And then he said, the angel asked the question, why seek ye the living among the dead? Can I help you today as I close this up? I want you to understand, stop seeking the living among the dead. Yeah. In other words, we have been given a command. We have been given a charge. We have been given a, a command to go ye tell to all the world and preach the gospel to every kind and every creature. It doesn't matter whether they hear it or not. You're supposed to preach it anyway. Yeah. You're supposed to let people know that he is a risen Savior. Yes. And thank God because he is a risen Savior. Yes, we're not serving a dead Savior. Thank we're not you, serving Lord. a God that we made with our own hands. Yes. Praise God for that. In other words, if I made him with my own hands, how can he have more power than me? I made him. He didn't make me. So we need to understand that God now is looking for us. We're still the seed yeah. have it with us, of the resurrected Christ. Yeah. And he's the first fruit of the resurrection. So now we have a resurrection in him. We have a resurrection in him. Come out help me say, when he died, I died. When he, when he rose, I rose. He I'm in him rose. and he's in me. And if we're connected like that together, yeah. God has looked out for us and kept us even in times when we didn't even know he was looking for, looking for us, or keeping us. He, we pray sometimes, God, thank you for keeping me through seen and unseen danger. Yeah. But God, I thank you today. Thank because you. you are the God. You kept us through all of this stuff that's yeah. going on in the universe. Yeah. Even when we didn't even know we were being kept, you kept us. Yeah. And we were putting our hands on things that we didn't know was contained. Oh, God. You kept her. You purified our hands because you put that supernatural power in us and you said in your word that it will not come near our dwelling. Yes. And as long as it's come near our dwelling, wherever we go and we don't know that it's there and we step into it, I believe that you got a shield yes. covering us everywhere we go. You got a, you got a hedge around yes, us Lord. that the enemy cannot shake, Thank cannot you, penetrate. Thank you, Neither can he break it down. Yes. We are like the walls of Jericho. Yes. We are established in God. And because yes. we are established in God, God has has made it possible for us to live our life in peace and not in torment. Y'all yes. bless y'all's heart today. I thank you for your time and I'm done. All right. God bless you. Thank you so much. I love you and I appreciate you. See you next time. I want to just get out of that for a minute and say uh, we want to share with you, uh, I don't know how many of you are listening that are, uh, know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, but if you do, and maybe you're not comfortable where you are in Him, we would like to just get, just tell you to, to give you the invitation to come on back to Christ. I know sometimes we get weak, we get weary in well-doing, but God is still the same God, and He's still waiting with open arms to claim you back 
and to restore you back to the fellowship. It's very simple. The age and time we're living in, it calls for repentance. And my brothers and sisters, you need to know that I need to stand in repentance. I need to be repenting every day, all day, because I might be unaware of some sin that I might commit it. I might not have the knowledge of it. And then some of us uh, do have knowledge of some of the sins and we just don't want to give it up right now. But let me tell you something. Don't give up anything. Allow God to remove it. Because if you try to give it up, you can go back and pick it up. But if you allow God to remove it, everything that God removes from your life, he fills it with his spirit. And this is the thing that we need to understand. I don't care how long you've been out of the will of God or whether you've ever been in the will of God. God still wants you. You're his creation. Oh, yes. And he still loves you. And he's just waiting on you to come back and turn your life around and give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. It's simple. Just pray this prayer with us. Amen. Just pray this prayer with us and you'll find yourself, and you believe it when you pray. It's one thing to pray it, but it's another thing to believe it. Yes. It's not hard. It's not hard to be saved. You just have to have the desire that you want to stay saved once you get saved. Once you start walking with Christ, you gotta move, you want to have the desire to continue to walk with Christ. Amen. Let's bow your head with us. Father, we're grateful for all your many blessings today. We thank you for the word that you've given us. Even though I'm rushing today, but I thank you for your spirit that is pushing me closer to draw nearer to you. God, I thank you that you have been Lord in my life for over 30 some years, God, and I tell you thank you for that. Thank you for the keeping power of the Holy Spirit. And God, I want the world to know and everyone that is listening to know that you, I haven't been right all the time. But God, you took care of me and you brought me back. You never left me. And you always gave me the word to come back. And I thank you that I had the strong mind, the strong will. God, just continue with you. And so I pray this morning that those that are listening will pray this prayer in sincerity of heart. And ask you, say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. And I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sin and to come into my heart and to live in me. I thank you because I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died, and on the third day, as the scripture was said, you rose again. And when you rose, God, you rose with all power in heaven and earth in your hand. I confess, God, and I believe that you are Lord of lords and kings of kings. And I'm asking you to just come into my life and live. Live in me. Help me change. Help me become the person that you want me to be. Help me today, God, to live a life that is pleasing to you. And God, I'll give you glory for it. All you have to do is just say those with a few little words and mean it from your heart. And God will keep you and God will deliver you and set you free from any yokes of bondage that has you bound. God bless your hearts. Thank you so much for your time. Amen. I pray that someone was helped by the word of God. Um, I just want to say uh, to uh, New Foundation, we love you and we appreciate you. You go to the bottom of the page uh, on, on uh, our website, you'll see the... Um, acts of giving there, I would say. So when you, you can give um, by mail, you can mail it in, you can give a fire, you can, uh, what else? <laughs> you can call me, amen. Or you can call uh, our, our financial secretary, uh, Sister Shania do, and we'll make sure that your uh, contributions get where they need to be. It's very important that you do give and we thank you for those that have been contributing um, because we still have bills to pay even though we are not in the building. We still, the bills didn't stop. So we thank God for uh, all of your giving, your contributions. And so let's not stop. Let's, let's keep it. We're going to be back in the sanctuary real soon. Um, we're praying that God will get us back there real soon. Amen. So that we can come together again. I do want to say though, uh, when God permits us to come back together, Again, let's, this, let's still practice safety precautions. In other words, you know we are hugging church and, and all of that, but when we come back, let's give this thing some time. We don't know who's who and what's what. Um, you know, so we don't want to be hugging and getting too close and shaking too many hands and kissing and none of that. Let's don't do that. But let's, let's keep our space, as, as uh, it would say, six feet apart. Try to do that so that um, when we do come back together, that we not be uh, a person that is 
uh, contaminating somebody else. I don't know who has it. I don't know who has it. You know, we don't know who has it. If you have not been tested, and then you don't know whether you have it or not. Amen. And uh, so, let's, I know you believe in God. I believe in God. I believe in God. I do too. I do too. But I'm still want, I still want you to stay your distance until we know <laughs> that this is over. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that we can continue to be together and not have to be separated for a long period of time. Take care of yourself. Stay home. Be safe. God bless your heart. And we miss you.